Hi everybody, Robin here at Toadstool Tarot, and I'm responding to a uh, uh, a tag that I saw uh, B at a Cali Sunflower do called Hashtag My Lenormand Collection. Now, I don't recall who initiated it, but I will try to remember to post the connection to B's video and uh, if you go there, I'm sure somewhere in the details it will tell you who started the tag so they get proper credit. <clears throat> in the meantime, you know, I like to do these little VR challenges if I can. And I do have a Lenormand collection. It's not very large. It's only about nine decks unless I've forgotten any. Um... So it's got a few questions, and I will post those as well. And question number one is, how did your Lenormand journey begin? I think I was like looking around in a metaphysical shop for different decks, and I saw one uh, that the images intrigued me. And one of the problems I had with tarot is too many cards, the size is unwieldy with the cards. Oracles particularly are just way too big for my taste. Uh, tarot mostly is okay, but I really like playing card size cards or smaller, like, you know, bridge size card is ideal for me. Um, the mini mini decks are a little too small. The pocket size is really good or the ones that come in a tin. But anyway, I was drawn towards smaller deck sizes and um, I didn't know very much about the system. I think I did watch a couple of videos. I wasn't sure I could figure out how best to use them. I didn't really like the playing card inserts on the images, even though I like the images. A lot of them had a real antique kind of secret feel to me that I like. I like that there were only, is it 36 cards or 35 cards? I can't even remember now, but they're not as many cards as a tarot at 78. So, and they're not as many even as a playing card deck. So. That seemed like a workable, uh, a nice, nice, comfortable amount to physically handle. And I liked that the images were sort of nostalgic, but or bordering on antique like, and they were simple, single kind of symbols. And um, I found out a little bit more about the system and how it worked. And I had been reading a little bit about open readings in tarot. And so, and I also had dealt with a few oracle decks. So I kind of relate oracle and tarot and Lenormand all the same way in terms of laying out a spread of cards and just sort of reading them intuitively as they're gathered together. And as far as an open reading goes, you know, like, a sequence between cards or which direction they're facing, which cards are speaking to or avoiding other cards, that kind of thing. And so um, I, I thought, I think I can do this. And so that's what uh, drew me to the system. That's how I started and what I found attractive about the decks is their size and their look. And what I thought was going to be just very easy. Um, I sort of breezed through those numbers there. You know, I have questions that I've laid below that, that you can go through one at a time if you can find a way to express yourself better in each one. What are your future plans with the Lenormand system? I don't have any different plans than I have now. I. Uh, unless I, if I run across a deck whose visuals appeal to me, I'll buy it and use it. But generally speaking, as a system, hmm, I'm not sure. I think the system feels somehow more immediate and a little bit less deep than tarot. 
it's a little more straightforward but um, sometimes I feel like I want that depth that I get from tarot that I'm not getting from Lenormand but if I just kind of try to keep it open to formulating sentences through the symbols of the keywords of the cards sometimes it gives me as good an answer as a three card or five card spread in tarot um, I'm actually finding that the longer I work the less easy it is for me to use oracle decks which sort of surprises me um, because when I do use oracles I prefer ones that have just images and no keywords or no um, sentences or guides or anything I just pick up on the visuals and interpret them um, because I feel like that's what true oracle or oracle oracles do uh, in time you know they read smoke they read flames they read you know images in water whatever they see they're seers they see things that are there in images and read those sort of intuitively and I like that aspect of an oracle but most oracles I run across tend to be more like heavily uh, uh, pat on the back positive imagery uh, support cards and heavily reliant on um, an informative guidebook and I sort of feel like if I've got a guidebook to turn to do I even need the images on the cards I don't know maybe I'll come back to Oracle but for now that's kind of out of the picture I kind of shoved it to one side for me again it all depends on the imagery in cards that come up that I find I enjoy or think I can use um, so we'll see what the future markets present um, I did study I, I did a work uh, shop or study group with uh, Kelly Fitzgerald of the truth and story channel and I believe it was three sessions and you could do all three or just purchase each one separately I only did the initial in the first one just to get my foot in the door but it covered all the meanings of the cards and that was sufficient for me the ones beyond that I think delved more into the layouts and spreads the grand tableau etc which I really was not that interested in because I wanted to know how to read individual cards in relation to one another and uh, the first session allowed me to do that uh, with regards to how I was dealing with open readings so um, that's kind of what got me going um, my first Lenormand deck was uh, the mystical Lenormand which I don't have the box handy it has a hand the box cover looks like that but it's in color and um, uh, it's by Re Regula Elizabeth Flechter I think anyway it's these this beautiful little deck it's about bridge size it's got you know angels on the back surrounding a cosmic viewpoint and the cards I liked because they were vignettes of images that are the Lenormand symbols but they had no words or labels they had in one corner an astrological sign which you can delve into or ignore I don't deal with astrology the other corner it gave you the card number so if you want to look up in the book additional meanings you can find out what that card is and, and look it up but you can sort of see what they are in the cards and I really liked that they were in these like like sort of little window frames and I liked most of the images just as paintings to interpret and I just thought it was a really pretty little deck and something that I could use sort of intuitively 
uh, and particularly after having taken Kelly's uh, workshop, uh, part one, I was able to know keywords for each of the cards and go from there. So I knew how to read with this initial deck. And even if I didn't know how to read with it, I could just treat it as an oracle because of the images in the deck. Let's see. Uh, the last Lenormand deck you purchased. What was the last one? Hmm. I think it was the nesting doll uh, Lenormand, which I found on uh, at Make Playing Cards. It's got a really sturdy little two-part box, and it's really cute. It is uh, uh, no guidebook, but uh, all the keywords come on a couple of extra cards that came with the deck. Uh, 36 cards, okay. It's by Red Cardinal Crafts, I think. And they're bridge size, pretty much. They're like Russian nesting dolls. And each one has the image inside the doll. It's a colorful and cute little deck. And if you like dolls, this might be for you. What Lenormand decks are you waiting to receive? None. Um, unless something comes up online that intrigues me, I don't have current plans to purchase anymore, and I don't have any on order. But, like I said, it's all going to come down to imagery that speaks to me or intrigues me. Um, and the last prompt is show me your Lenormand decks. Okay, you've seen two. Um, <clears throat> after the uh, uh, mystical Lenormand, is that what it was called? Then I, I, I noticed a lot of them had playing card inserts on them, which I really didn't care for and uh, didn't use that aspect of them. So I was looking for something kind of antique looking that didn't have the inserts. And I found this deck. It's the Lenormand Oracle Cards. It's from... Los Garabeo. That's the back. Um... So these are, I guess they're playing card size, pretty much. Pardon me. These are the backs, which I think are beautiful. I wanted something, you know, with a pretty antique sort of back. And the sort of antique, kind of classic antique imagery of Lenormand on the fronts. Um, now, the only thing about this one is... There's a lot of space, empty space, at the tops of the images of the cards. I think that's because the more traditional version of this had the playing card inserts up there in that void. So um, if that bothers you, that extra sky, then uh, and that explains why. And maybe you'd prefer, I think there are versions of this with the same Im imagery that do supply the playing card uh, image. But I love the kind of vintage-y, antique -y kind of quality of these 
illustrations. Now, after that, <clears throat> I went to, there's a website called Tarot by Seven. I think so, uh, some of you are familiar with it. They did a tarot deck that a lot of people found, uh, was popular with a lot of people called uh, the Deck of the Bastard, which combined um, Pixies, uh, RWS minors with some other classical deck majors. I can't remember now the details of it, but it was very popular. Anyway, when I went to their site, I found uh, this deck. It was called the 2017... Uh, my goodness, the font is so bad. Uh... Samhain. <laughs> 2017 Samhain Lenormand. I mean, the font is really difficult to read on the, on the title card. But the thing I liked about this was um, this antique feel. They're on linen cards, cardstock, and they have these beautiful backs with a skull in a kind of an antique frame. And each of the cards is framed in a sort of casket shape border and they're not specifically Samhain you know other than this sort of theme or idea of the the casket uh, framing them uh, there are maybe two or three images in the deck that relate to Samhain or Halloween I think there's uh, some with bats in them and one with a childhood and a jack-o'-lantern and um, but generally speaking um, they're just kind of antique traditional looking cards and very pretty now at the same time I was intrigued at the same website with uh, a deck that they called the Vintage German Kaleidoscope Edition. And these also are linen cards. <laughs> I bought them more as a novelty than anything. I thought they were really beautiful, but they're also <laughs> entirely unusable as far as I'm concerned because um, they're the kaleidoscopic images, that's the back, which is fine, but the images on the front are little, like this is, I think, the key, but it's really hard to see the key in there in that kaleidoscope. And some of them are a little easier to see than others, but they're not plainly marked with the, the numbers or names of the cards. So if you can't see the image in the kaleidoscopic version it's going to make it really challenging to read with but I just thought as sort of mandalas they were really pretty to kind of look at and I don't know it was a, an impulse purchase but it's a deck I never use because it's too difficult to use um, I suppose I could take a marker and mark the number or the name of the card on each card but I don't really like to deface cards from the way they were uh, published, even when it comes to edging cards or, or trimming them. It's like the creator had something in mind, and I tend to respect what they put out there, and if I don't agree with it, I just don't buy it. But, I mean, these are pretty cards, and I suppose if you want to take the time and you've got really good eyes, you might be able to puzzle out 
what each card is in order to read them. Anyway, so that is the, what was it called, German Kaleidoscope or something? Uh, no, I can't find the title card. No matter. Next comes um, a deck that I bought from a former channel creator named Mendy, who had a channel called Artistry of Tarot, I believe, which is no longer around. She's on to other things now. But uh, she did two versions of her own little Lenormand deck, and this is the mini version that I ordered. And, and these are watercolors that she did. And they are also on a linen stock. I think she called this the Butterfly Lenormand. And they do have the uh, playing card symbols in the corner and uh, a very tiny uh, card name on it and in the other corner a number so you can tell but you can tell what they are the house the key the mountain the letter uh, the ring what is that oh the coffin my lighting is not good here, so the birds, the cross, uh, and the, is that the snake? I think it's a snake. So, um, yeah, it's a really nice little version. I'm not personally fond of square or round cards, but, you know, it would be really good for a um, grand tableau this size and shape. I don't know if this is, this is probably no longer available because I think she's moved away from the public light um, and I don't know if she's still marketing these. I suspect not. But anyway, the next one she gifted me, which I crocheted a little pouch for, is the Midia, I think it's called, Tarot. This is the mini version. And I think B showed this on her, in her collection. And these are really nice, soft, kind of pencil renderings of cards. And I should say, of all the decks I've shown you, I haven't used any of these in quite a while. I pretty much only use two decks, and these are the ones I'm about to show you. At some point after I created my own Majors Only Tarot deck, I decided to try my hand at Lenormand, because I thought, well, Majors Only, 22 cards. Next, next step up from there is the Lenormand 36 cards. That's not too bad. And then going up from there, you have Tarot at 78. And that seemed a little overwhelming. So anyway, I started with the Majors only. And that's my, my first one was the, the Open Face Tarot, which I didn't make playing cards. And they have these lovely little vinyl boxes that you can get. They're just generic, but you can store cards in them. And I found that after getting these, get, getting this and making these that basically just come shrink-wrapped, that I needed somewhere to store it. 
And when it came time to uh, create Lenormand cards, which I did, uh, it was the same deal, shrink wrap. Where am I going to store it? And just so happens these little plastic boxes will hold a Majors Only plus a Lenormand in the box. So I've been carrying this around a lot lately. I created my own Lenormand. And um, what I do, or tend to do, I told you I do open readings, I'll do a six card spread. So I'll do three cards, three tarot cards across the top row of my majors, and then three Lenormand underneath of the, you know, sort of major minor kind of a play. Um, sometimes I'll do five and five, but mostly three and three. Anyway, these are the backs. These are at make playing cards. It's, this one's called the Little Norman's Little Lenormand Cards. And this one I designed in sort of pop colorful images. They have all the symbols uh, and numbers and even the playing card designation, if that's something you want, on the cards. But um, they also have this character, Little Norman, because I find that I relate better to symbols if they show figures in action in terms of how they're relating to the symbols. So basically you could see yourself in this little image, uh, this little character, and how they relate to the symbols on the cards. And I think I found that easier for me to relate to Lenormand and use them in that way. So, uh, you know, and it's a friendly, silly little deck, and I think it works really well. And it's very direct. I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I don't find the character distracting at all from the symbols on the cards. The symbols really predominate, I'd say, or are the center of the card. You don't have a lot of extra things in the background. I mean, okay, you've got a sun on this card, but it's obviously not the sun card. It's because that's very tiny. It's the boat card or the ship card. So uh, that seems pretty obvious to me. Yeah. So you see, I emphasize with size the symbols on each card. So that's Little Norman's Little Lenormand deck. And um, I use that one quite a bit because it just happens to be in the same box with my open face tarot, which I use every day. So um, that's that. The other one I use, I found through a, a walkthrough by uh, Chris Kelly McFadden. And this was a box set put out by, who was it put out by? Watkins, I guess. It's the Enchanted Lenormand uh, by Caitlin Matthews. And it comes in a big box with a really great guidebook. I found the guidebook probably the easiest uh, re to read and learn Lenormand for me personally. So I recommend that. The thing I love about this deck, um, well, I love the size of the cards and how they handle. They are on the glossy side, which not a major fan of glossy generally. But it, it makes them sturdy. Um, they're a good size. They're sort of bridge size. And they have this little pattern on the back, which has sort of the four elements in the four corners and a crystal ball in the center. And each card has the symbolic image within a crystal ball. And there's something ab about the way 
these cards are depicted that has a very fairy tale, sort of colonial era fairy tale imagery, kind of like the 1700s. Um, and also, if you lay them out in a grid, they sort of connect and make a kind of a lattice. So that's interesting. But I just love the art style of these images. I love, love stuff that feels like old classic art or something vintage or historic. Um, here you can see what I mean by colonial. So this is probably actually my favorite Lenormand deck. I, you, if I want Lenormand, this is the one I use more than any other, including my own. I, I only use my own because I said it happens to, to have a home in a box that it shares with my tarot. But if I specifically want Lenormand, I will drag out this particular set, uh, which is my favorite. So that's the Enchanted Lenormand. And so I think that wraps up this little session. Thank you for joining me. Hope you have a great week ahead. And... Um, Maybe you'll respond to this and uh, tag me or tag B or whatever. <laughs> Have fun. Bye.